Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I wanna to talk to you about how to calculate the efficiency of an inverter or an inverter charger in your particular power system. This is gonna have big implications as far as how long a given battery bank is gonna last with a given set of appliances. And this is gonna help you size your battery bank accurately so that your appliances will run as long as you would like them to. And you're gonna have that accurate number for yourself or for a client if you're building power systems for other people. Now, this is an experiment I've wanted to do for a long time because we all, always have to calculate how efficient the inverter is and we can use industry numbers like 80%, 85%, 90%, but it's hard to tell because the efficiency changes based on the appliance that we plug in. So for a 50 watt laptop like this, the efficiency is gonna be very poor, very low. And when we put larger appliances like an electric stove, the efficiency is going to get a lot better. So what we're gonna do is run these calculations and by the end of the video, I'm gonna give you a weighted average that you can use, at least for this particular appliance, but you're gonna see how to calculate based on different appliances. We'll take that weighted average and you can size your system and your battery bank based on that efficiency number. So hopefully that made sense. Now, what we're going to do to start out is we're going to look at how much power is coming out of the battery just to have the system on. So we've got a Servo GX monitor here and the BMS, they're taking a little bit of power. We may have some other phantom loads. So we're going to look at our baseline power consumption and that is gonna be five watts. This is calculated here at the smart shunt. It's telling how many watts of power are coming out of the battery bank at this time and it's reported here on the Servo GX screen. So we're gonna take that five watts and we're gonna subtract it from any numbers that we get once we turn on the inverter and turn on our appliances. We'll subtract that five watts because we know it's not going to the loads. Um, so let's go ahead and turn on the inverter. It'll initialize here and then I'm gonna turn on our laptop. This is gonna be our first appliance. I'll go ahead and log in and you can see we're going through the kilowatt EZ. This is gonna calculate the watts coming out of our power outlet. And we are charging the laptop and I'm gonna turn it on. So that's gonna be our setup for our experiment. This is gonna be our first calculation. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. We're gonna look at how much power is coming out of the battery bank. And then we'll zoom in down there and look at how much power is actually making it out of that outlet to run our laptop. So we'll zoom in and take a look. Here we are, this is the power consumption with the laptop on and charging. This is also powering the inverter itself. Now we're gonna subtract the five watts that's going to the Servo GX and the rest of the system. We know that power is not going to the laptop. So we will take an average 58, 60, we'll give it a second here and uh, let's see. So we can say 59 watts would be the average We'll subtract five and we'll take 54. And um, so 54 watts is going to be the power consumption out of the batteries. Now let's hop down to the outlet and see how many watts we're getting out of the outlet itself. So here we are down at the outlet and it is vacillating, but what we're gonna do is take an average amount, 34.5, 35, 36, 35. Um, what we could do if we wanted a more accurate measurement, we could take this over maybe a one hour measurement and uh, get the kilowatt hours consumed in that hour and we could get the watts out of that calculation. Um, but let's say that we are averaging about 35 watts. All right, we're gonna get our final efficiency. I've got my calculator. We're gonna take 35 watts and divide by 54 watts. So you're gonna take the watts out, divide by the watts in to get your efficiency. 35 divided by 54 is 64.81% efficient, 64.8. That's pretty low. Frankly, if you had an inverter that ran at that efficiency, you'd probably take it back and get a different one. But uh, thankfully, that's just because our load is so small. Half the power is really going to the coils inside the inverter. The other half is going to the laptop. And so we're not getting a high performance number as far as efficiency, but once we put an electric stove and some of the larger loads, our efficiency should go way up and uh, the numbers are gonna look a lot better. So we'll get the laptop out of here and switch over to the electric stove and run our experiment again. But before we do that, 
If you're interested in your overall power system, not just your inverter, but things like solar, alternator, and shore power, then I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the three main power sources you're gonna have in RVs and boats, which are solar, shore, and alternator power. It's gonna talk about how they all have strengths, but they also have weaknesses. But when you combine them together in a holistic power strategy, it's gonna make sure that you're covered day and night, no matter where you go out on your next adventure, and you're not gonna be worried about running out of power while you're out there. There's also a discussion about different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those. That's gonna help you narrow in on the very important decision of which battery to go with. And then lastly, there is a conceptual diagram that's gonna show essentially what you have here. It's gonna have the power systems or the power sources at the top. It's gonna to show how they make their way through the system and come out at your end devices, such as your laptop like that. So it's a really illuminating diagram that is part of the ultimate van power cheat sheet. To grab your own copy, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash van power. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get our laptop out of here. I'm gonna bring in an electric stove and you'll see our efficiency numbers are going to get a lot better. All right, so we have an electric stove hooked up. It's about a thousand watts and it's been running for a few minutes. It looks like our numbers have stabilized. I've got it on max power. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna zoom in here, take the number. We're gonna zoom into the outlet and get the number and we're going to determine our efficiency. It should go way up from what we saw with the laptop. So let's take a look. All right, so we have about 1103 average watts coming out of the battery bank. It's vacillating a little bit, but 1103 is kind of the midpoint. And what I wanna do is subtract the five watts going to the Servo GX and that's going to leave us with 1,098 watts coming out of the battery bank. At this point, let's zoom in on the outlet and see what we have coming out down there. This one's pretty straightforward. We have 984 watts coming out of the outlet to power the stove. So we're gonna divide 984 divided by 1,098 to get our efficiency. All right, so we've got the moment of truth. We've got 984 watts coming out down there. We're gonna divide that by 1,098 watts coming out of the battery bank. We are at 89.62% efficiency, right under 90% efficiency. As you can tell, we are way up from the 64% efficiency that we had with the laptop. And at this point, 90% of the power is actually making it from the batteries to the stove, and we're only losing about 10% to the inverter. So definitely a lot better numbers than we saw with the laptop. Just to get a great weighted average, what I'm gonna do is add a second stove. We're gonna take it up to 2000 watts and get the efficiency there. We'll take our weighted average and we'll give you a number that you can use to plug in to get dead accurate calculations for an inverter like this to size your battery bank appropriately. So let's add the second stove and take a look. All right, we're set up for our final test. I've added the two stoves. Now I did recharge the batteries back to the same level they were at for the previous test, just so we have an apples to apples comparison on the efficiency. But at this point, I'm gonna turn on the inverter and uh, we'll take a look at the screen. Now I do wanna warn you, 2000 watts is gonna overload our little kilowatt EZ down there. We're pushing it to the max, but we wanna get this final measurement. We're gonna check how many watts are coming out of the batteries, hop down there to the outlet, check that, and we'll get our final efficiency test wrapped up. So let's go ahead and turn it on. You'll hear a little beep down there. The stoves are gonna heat up. Once they do, we'll zoom in here and take a look at the watts. All right, so to run the two stoves coming out of the battery bank, it's vacillating between 2370 and 2386. It's a 16 watt spread. So we'll divide that. 2378 is going to be the midpoint and we will subtract the five watts for the Servo GX and the other loads. So we are at 2373 coming out of the battery bank to run those two stoves. So let's go down to the outlet and see how much power we have coming out down there. All right, so here we are at the outlet and it is steady at 1,947 watts. All right, so we'll divide that by what we had coming out of the battery bank to get our efficiency. All right, so last one here, we're gonna take 1,947 watts that came out of the outlet and divide by 2,373 that came out of the battery bank 
and we are gonna get 82.05% efficiency for the inverter running the two stoves. So 82%, we were just at 90% running one stove. So you can see as we overload the inverter, the efficiency goes back down. There's kind of a sweet spot running the thousand watt stove. We hit that 90% efficiency. For the record, the max efficiency listed for this inverter charger is 93%. Uh, and I should specify that's referring to the inverter part of the inverter charger. 93% is as efficient as it gets. And I will say too, we are measuring the complete system here from the batteries through this infrastructure, down these cables over to the outlet. So some people may get me and say, hey, you know, you need to measure it right at the terminals of the inverter, power in and power out. But I thought this would be a better real world scenario because this is actually how you're going to wire this up. And uh, this is a true measurement of what you're gonna get in the real world. So at this point, we're going to do a weighted average and I'm gonna average the 64% from the laptop, the 90% from one stove, 82% from the two stoves. Now, if we just average those percentages together, it's actually gonna be way off. What I'm gonna do is calculate a weighted average, all the watts in from all three tests, compared to all the watts out from all three tests. And we're gonna get a percentage from that that you can plug in to run your calculations and properly size your battery bank. And this exercise that we're doing can be used for any inverter or any converter. You're measuring watts in and watts out, and that's gonna give you that efficiency. So let me pull together a weighted average and we'll get our final conclusive efficiency number. All right, we've got the moment of truth. On this paper, I have the total weighted average efficiency, and that is, drum roll please, 84.14%. So what we did is I added up the watts out from all three tests. That was a total of 2,966 watts coming out of that outlet. And I divided that by the watts in from the batteries from all three tests. And that was a total of 3,525 watts. And uh, 2,966 divided by 3,525 is 0 0.8414 or 84.14%. Now what I would do is I would round that down to an even 84%. And the way that you're going to do your calculations is, let's say you have a 100 watt appliance. You're going to take 100 divide by 0.84 and in that case you would get 119.05 watts so basically you got to put out 119 watts from the batteries to feed a 100 watt appliance and as you can tell that's 19 percent more watts that need to be provided by the batteries than you actually receive at the appliance and so basically 20 percent extra capacity is needed in your batteries than you would think for any appliance that runs through the inverter. So that is how you make sure that you have enough battery capacity so you don't run out of power in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of your next adventure on your next road trip. Hopefully that was useful for you. To me, this was a really fun experiment and I like to know that the numbers I'm using to crunch my numbers and to size battery banks are based on some kind of real world testing and uh, that's what we did today. So hopefully this was useful for you. Thanks for watching. Before you go, be sure to grab your copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click the link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.